we just got some proposed changes to the Diablo 2 resurrected 2.4 patch. We're going to check that out. We're going to check it out. We're going we're gonna to tome about it. And then from there, uh, we got to kick some ass in PvP because it's Thursday night, and what the hell else will we do? On February 3rd, we got an update to this Diablo 2 Resurrected Patch 2.4, a much requested update from many, many streamers, content creators, and everybody across the globe submitting feedback to Blizzard. These guys are listening. Kind of cool. It's refreshing to know that the voices of the people are being heard. Oh, look at this. Look at this. All right, Barbarian, we have our first update. Warcry's mana cost now increases by only 0.75 per level instead of one. And the developer comments here, the reason why they did this is we've seen your feedback. They say that the mana cost for Warcry is too high compared to how it performs. We want to try out a modification to its mana cost and see how this uh, affects its cost effectiveness. It's still going to be garbage. I'm not sure if decreasing it by only 25% is really going to make it that much more viable. But also, the real problem with Warcry is that it, it just doesn't do enough damage. Even if you have 200 FCR on your character in PVM, it's not going to do a lot. In PvP, with the lack of stun locks, it's just really bad, period. It's never going to be good. Go ahead. Make Warcry go through the roof, man. Like, absolutely. Go for it. Like, it needs some buffs. This is a big one. This is uh, this is surrounding shape-shifting skills. This is surrounding shape-shifting skills. Now, as you guys remember, there was a bug with this. Mr. Llama SC put out a video talking all about how they, they killed the shape-shifting builds, which, I mean, they practically did. The, the glitch that existed before was that when you morphed into Werebear or Werewolf, it would actually just take your human form IAS and it would apply that. There wouldn't be any bonuses or setbacks or anything. Uh, and basically, what they did with, with this is they reverted some piece of the logic back to how it was. And now what happens is it always prefers the faster attack speed, right? So, like, if you morph into a bear and you're technically slower with these new changes, then it will just revert to whichever version of this change is faster. Same thing applies to werewolf. Uh, you know, so basically what this is going to do is make it so that when you morph into Werebear, Werewolf, you're not slowed down by this new attack speed modification that they did. Really what's going to make these builds viable, and I'll say it again, I've said it a million times at this point, make it so that these builds can teleport when they're a Werewolf or they're a Werebear. You got to make it so these guys can teleport, otherwise they're just so set back in you know in viability compared to other builds now i know what some people are going to say to that some people are going to say oh man now teleport just ruined the game teleport just that's just terrible we need to get rid of enigma you sir did not play in 1.09 when the only viable character you could play was a sorceress because that was the only character that could teleport around the game and mf and farm really any area if you were talking about farming any area with anything but a sorceress you were making a grave mistake. You, you were wasting a lot of your time. Uh, but this, you know, having Enigma, having characters be able to teleport makes a lot uh, more builds viable. Uh, it's, it's sort of the, it's the blessing and the curse, the unfortunate truth of Diablo 2. All characters having teleport was extremely necessary. I think there should be way more creative ways to do it. And I also think that uh, characters that are in morphed form, such as Werebear or Werewolf, should also be able to teleport. I don't know why they can't, especially if they can cast like Hurricane and, and Cyclone Armor and all of that shit. The next change surrounds Ravens. Okay, okay. I could kind of understand this. We actually made a, a PvP build that was centered around the Summoning Druid. Right? It was kind of a meme style build. It wasn't really that great, but uh, it could have been the pilot that wasn't really that great on it, right? Uh, you know, the, the build, the, the Ravens actually hit pretty hard uh, in 2.4. We actually took out some pretty notable players with some, you know, with some Ravens just flying around us. It was kind of embarrassing for them, but also really discouraging because you can't interact with Ravens at all. You just kind of have to wait for them to to just fire off all their attacks and disappear. They're sort of like traps. It looks like what they had to do was nerf the damage at certain level tiers here. 
Uh, they had to nerf the damage because apparently they were doing way too much early on. I'm going to assume this is back at 12. So your Ravens hit 12 times. Uh, you know, good. I actually played this game for 20 years and I had no idea how Ravens died. I had no idea they actually worked like traps uh, and that they expired after so many hits. But uh, good to know. Yeah, put it back to 12, whatever. Uh, I, I think in PvP, summon druids are still going to have an uphill climb. Uh, and in PvM, we tested the shit out of this build. It looks pretty fun. It can kind of get you there. and start, It's way better than it, it ever was. But it's still got a long ways to go. Um, you know, so it looks like they just dialed down the damage at certain uh, level tiers. And that's cool. When you get into the end game, I think they'll still be fine. All right, on to the next change. We're scrolling down here. Necromancer. I'm, I'm really hoping to see some Necromancer changes here. Uh, there's, there's one in particular, and, and it does indeed fall right into this, right into this category right here. So let's see if we, let's see if we see it. And, and, and we don't. I was really expecting some big red text somewhere in this general vicinity. Bone Spirit does way too much damage. It doesn't make any difference in PVM, and it does a shit ton more in PVP. Bone Neckers are the only PVP class that you can run right now uh, when this patch drops if this isn't fixed. That's where I stand on that. That's all I've got to say about it. And, uh, oh, oh, look at this. Oh, this, we called this, right? This was, this was bound to happen. This was bound to happen. Something was bound to change with this. They did this thing in the patch where they started scaling the holy fire or all of the holy auras. They started scaling their damage based on the proximity to the character. Looks like they just took that right out of the patch. Big red line through all of that. Now, here's the thing. This, this is kind of weird and, and hard to read right here or difficult to understand. Damage level scaling increased. They took it from 90% with a red line through it right here to 70 percent so does this mean that this aura will still have a buff these aura dens that they are seemingly thinking are so weak are not and never really have been the only problem with the aura den in in previous patches is that the auras weren't supposed to be responsible for taking out crowds of minions right and it seems like that's a direction they want to move into I was really hoping that this whole section would say that it just returned it to how it was. But uh, I know some people are going to feel some type of way about that. Fuck them. You can now spawn multiple hydras on controller when holding the button down. Good. Cool. That's, uh, that's a good change. I love the fact that they're paying uh, attention to console players. And then it looks like they took out, they kept the casting delay removed. They kept that. They kept the max number of hydras to six. But it looks like what they did was they took out the synergies for the for the damage, right? Which I mean, I'm kind of impartial about this, right? Like I loved the fact that we had Hydra, we had a new kind of sork that we could uh, we could go through the game with, kill some shit. But uh, I mean, let's be serious. We were killing Meph from two and a half screens away. He didn't even like he couldn't see us. We're just sitting there CT casting Hydra from two and a half screens away, killing this dude. It might have actually been further than that. But, you know, that's a rough estimate. Killing Meph from two and a half screens away while he's got bugged PTR life. Just want to let you know. We're just sitting there AFK killing bugged PTR Meph with all of the, you know, our CT casted Hydras. Uh, it was kind of ridiculous, but I was, uh, I was kind of looking forward to some CT cast killing uh, on some budget characters. But uh, at least that involves your character casting spells, unlike an Oridin. Uh... Other than that, though, like, I can't say I hate it. I'm just kind of impartial to it. Like, yeah, Hydra didn't need to do that much damage when you could CT cast it from two and a half screens away. Just didn't. On the rune words, looks like I don't, I don't believe they've made any edits to these. I think they really should. Uh, with Plague in particular, right? Now that we've nerfed Sins so much with this, uh, with the FHR change um, and all of how that works... Why not make this in a claw too? Like, what are we scared of at this point? Uh, they say, we are looking at player feedback concerning throwing barbarians and are discussing potential options. In the meantime, increasing throwing item quantity across the board seemed like a reasonable quality of life change. Couldn't, couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. That's a very good change. So in light of that, 
arrow and bolt max quantity is now increased to 500. Throwing weapon quantity has been increased by 50%. I don't know if that's enough. They want to make the throw bar viable, but they're not pulling the absolute juck fuckery that they are with the Oridin and then dialing themselves back. They're saying, hey, throw barbs suck and we understand that. We're not really sure what to do, so we're going to take some baby steps here. That's, that's the way I think you should approach a lot of these builds. Uh, I'm happy to see you're doing it with throw barbs. My official feedback on throw barbs uh, is you should make throw do splash damage. Uh, splash damage to hit monsters. Everybody's all fired up about Pierce. They think Pierce is so cool. I'll say this. I'll say this again. Pierce is overrated in this game. Everybody's like, "Oh, I gotta have that 100% Pierce." I can promise you, no, you don't. Like, if you if you are using an Amazon and you're like, "I need 100% Pierce to PVM," you don't. If if you think you do, you've been building your Amazons wrong for 20 years. You don't need 100% Pierce. It was something that people had in previous patches and they got used to. Maybe they came back after a certain amount of years. You don't need it. If only 80% of your javelin that spits, uh, splits into 42 different shots pierces their targets, you're still going to have a pretty devastating hit in a crowd of monsters that you throw lightning fury into. right? If, you have, uh, if you're shooting multi-shot or you're shooting strafe and only 80% of the 24 arrows that you, that you bust out actually pierce your target, you're still going to have a pretty good pierce rate, right? You don't need 100% pierce. In fact, it's overrated on a lot of builds. I think with throw builds in particular, pierce is really overrated. Uh, I think it should do splash damage. Maybe you do a combination of both, pierce and splash damage. PD2 did this uh, with a lot of their melee weapons, and I actually think it was a very good change. It was very simple across the board with a very simple, straightforward change to some of their melee weapons, and it had some pretty drastic effects on PVM, but it also didn't fuck up PVP too much. I think it's a pretty solid, uh, pretty solid change. Perhaps as another baby step, we could start there. Truth be told, uh, whenever it comes to throwing an item that's not guided and doesn't seek its target out, I think there should be a serious reward for actually connecting with your target. It's, it pays off significantly in PVM, but that's very hard to do in PVP. Try chucking a lacerator at your opponent in the blood more. Good luck hitting them. Not only does AR and defense come into play, but you actually have to hit a moving target with a, with a skill that does not seek it out. It's, kind, it's really hard to do. I think there should be a big damage payoff for that. You should make throw barbs just do shit tons of damage. Take all of your passion for fire oridens and put it into the throw barb. Uh, you know, all, all in all, with uh, what they did with this patch here, I gotta say, I love the fact that they are listening to player feedback with this patch. Not just me, not just Dabrunsky, not just Llama. They're listening to people submitting tickets. So if, you know, if you're one of those people that's just like, my voice ain't being heard or whatnot, go on to Blizzard's website, submit a ticket you know, get some of your friends that also play the game to do the same thing and talk about the same shit. They listen to this stuff. Some of the things they brought up here weren't anything that any of us talked about. I'm actually really impressed at how well they're listening to the community because they want to get this right. And these people should be commended for that.